I want to start by doing a little experiment. Uh, it's just an exercise. Everybody should have in their hands a card and a pencil, okay? So what we're going to do, I would like you to try to draw this portrait. But we're going we're gonna to do it a little bit different, okay? If you're right-handed, I want you to use your left hand. If you are left-handed, I want you to use your right hand. If you're ambidextrous, I want you to use your, hand, your mouse. <laughs> we're going to do this for about a minute, and then we're going to talk about it. Okay? So we can start now. It's going to be ugly, I know. It's not an art exercise. It's not a drawing exercise. But I want you to try your best. Try to capture the details. The texture, I know you will be surprised with the result. Yeah, it's supposed to be difficult. If you didn't recognize this guy, this is Leonardo da Vinci. He's one of the most creative and ingenious person that, I, that ever lived. <laughs> I'm also happy to be an artist. Of course, not like Leonardo da Vinci. But I have to create ideas every day. I have to come up with new ideas every day. But sometimes it's just, you know, my brain stops working. Just for some reason, it stops working. Some of my friends would say it's because I'm old. But I cannot afford to have uh, these brain blockages, you know. I, I have to deliver work. So this is a terrible thing for me because I have to keep working, okay? So try to prevent this from happening again. I started researching about creativity and how creativity works and how creativity relates with psychology and neuroscience. And I found, I found the work of Professor Alan Snyder at the University of Sydney very, very fascinating for some, a very specific reason. The research from Alice Snyder is showing that there are evidence that the very same organ that is responsible for creating new ideas, our brain, it is also the organ responsible for creating the inhibitions and the blockages in our creative process. Our brain, or one of our most basic functions in our brain, is to help us adapt with our environment. And we do this by learning from this environment. Every time we do an action, any kind of action, any activity, our brain starts sparking with communication, signals all over. Our neurons start communicating. And they start communicating different areas of the brain. The more repetitive these activities, the more these signals get in brain inside of our brain, and they become automatic responses. They, be, they become habits, they become uh, responses, they become reflexes. And that is the reason why sometimes when you leave home, you don't remember if you flush the toilet, you don't remember if you turn off the lights, or you don't remember if you lock the doors. You're wondering already? This happens because these are activities that we do so often that we don't have to think about them anymore. You see, the brain, he wants to save energy and save time for you. Actually, our brain is very lazy. Right? So he wants to do his work quickly, economically, and go to rest. That's, that is how you can wear your shoes and you don't have to learn once again how to tie your shoes. And you don't have to learn again how to drive your car. Or you don't have to learn again your way back home. So this is all very convenient and very easy for our life. Yes. We have a computer there that takes care of 
all the details for us, all our work every day. But this is also bad. This also has consequences for us. And one of the most important consequences is that the brain starts losing one of the most important abilities. And that is, we start losing neuroplasticity. What neuroplasticity is basically the ability that the brain has to adapt itself, to learn, to modify itself. Going back to the drawings that we were making before, these are some examples that I do with my students of creativity. And these are high school students. And every time we do this exercise, they admit that they are not very good at drawing. Although we can see that we get some really amazing results. And I'm, I'm sure that some of yours are really, really, really good. Something happened in our brain when we were doing this exercise. One, your brain right now started making connections, new connections. Your brain say, hmm, what are you doing? This is not the right hand to write. You're using the wrong hand. Guys, we have to figure this out, okay? He's using the wrong hand, the stupid one, okay? Let's make new connections. Let's, tr let's bring the people who can help us figure out the position, the texture of the paper, the texture of the pencil, okay? the weight of the, the hand. Let's try to make this work. So you have awakened new pathways or neural pathways in your brain. But you have also incremented a little bit of neuroplasticity in your brain. And that is very important. There are studies that say that around the age of 25, the brain says, I'm done. This is, this is all the work that I need to do, and it just settles down. You have to challenge your brain every day. How you do this? When you learn a new language, you challenge your brain. When you try to learn how to play an instrument, you challenge your brain. When you try to write, when you try to paint, or when you try to recite poetry, when you dance, you challenge your brain. You are telling your brain to do different things, all the same things in different ways. And that's how you keep your brain alive. You're gonna notice that a lot of artists, they live for a very long life and they die very old, but they have a very lucid brain because they have lived a life of activity, the brain activity. So do whatever you have to do to keep your brain busy, to keep your brain active. You do it because, not because you want to be an artist or not because you want to be a writer. You do it because it's good for you. You do it like you brush your teeth or like you take showers or like you sleep. It's beneficial for you. So. I beg you, don't settle and challenge your brain every day. Even if you have to take a walk backward, not right now down the stairs, don't do that. But take a walk backwards once in a while, or you can make a little dance. Thank you.